So the other day, someone was asking for some online advice on what to put first, the Variac or the Isolation Transformer. Well, it looks like I'm going to be starting a flame war because the way I like to do it is to put my Isolation Transformer first, my Variac second. Now that's just the way I was instructed how to do it. Others, of course, take it the other way around. Variac first, then Isolation Transformer. So I decided to do some experiments to see which way was best. But before we start the experiments, let's do a little background and have a look at the schematic of a variac. Now, I always like the color in the lines as it makes it easier for me to understand. So, let's have green for earth, red for neutral, though it's normally white, but you couldn't see it here if it was white. And then we'll just leave good old line as black. Now, if you get anything at all out of this video, the one thing I want you to understand is that that neutral always connects back to ground. Now let's have a quick look at the schematic for an isolation transformer with a load. As you can see, my earth leads into the isolation transformer, and I also have an earth on the chassis of my load. Now with this setup, there's no direct connection between my load's earth ground and the earth ground of my house's electrical system. So let's do a hookup of the variac and then isolation transformer, then the load. So as you can see here, my Variac and my isolation transformer all have a reference to ground, but on the other side of the isolation transformer, I have no reference to ground. Now, another important thing to note is that the chassis of my Variac is also connected to ground. Many forget this, but this is perfectly normal as it's a safety feature of the electrical grounding system. So, as you can see, we're perfectly safe to hook our little probe up and probe her out inside our load and not get a nasty shock. Now, if you do happen to touch the Variac, you are grounding yourself to earth ground. Now, it's usual to touch your Variac because you're always playing around with it, adjusting it, turning it off and on, or whatever. Hence the reason mine's got a big plastic knob on top. Now, you will be safe if you have to touch the chassis of your Variac and the chassis of your load, as neither have the same ground reference. So, what I'm going to attempt tonight is a scenario where you touch the Variac and the chassis of your load, and that chassis has some sort of fault where a wire is touching hot. Will this be the nasty result, which would spoil your day? Let's go find out. So, as you can see, any exposed metal is grounded on my Variac. Okay, so a quick demonstration. All I have here is a little fuse box switched into that. That's on the line. This is the neutral. That's connected to a good old light bulb. My Variac. Just plug directly in the wall. Now the Variac is set at 50 volts. If there was some sort of short and I touched the ground, you're going to see that light bulb bright up. Boing! We've all seen that before. Now this time, I've got the Variac plugged directly into the isolation transformer coming out right into the plug. And if I touch that, I should get no light, because I'm not grounded out. Still power here, because if I go in here, I get 50 volts. Now, let's try it the other way around, which is Variac, then Isolation Transformer. just as safe. How about that? But of course, if I touch the live, it's going to give me... Oop. 
It is safe. It will be. Now, of course, it is always possible to short yourself out with this thing. And a quick demo of that. So basically, I'm hooked in here and here across the, across these two. And if I short out the normal way, which is to touch ground here, bingo. So that's the only way to do it, but you got that's really contrived. That normally if that's happening, you got real problems because you've just touched your variac in very odd ways. And very little light. Okay, now Dum Dum comes by and touches the box. Nothing. Nothing. So, you can see that is the one scenario where you can't zap yourself. So, the pleasant thing I've discovered is that it is perfectly safe to set up your Variac isolation transformer and then load. Of course, there's always the off chance that if you made contact between the line and the ground of your Variac, for whatever reason, your lab's a mess, or you've just made the wrong contact by mistake, you will have an unpleasant day. Now, if you had a hooked up isolation transformer first, and made the same mistake by touching your ground and your line of your variac, you're not going to get a shock. Of course, you can still get a shock with this setup by touching the earth and line on the hot side of the isolation transformer. The final word is that putting the isolation transformer first means that everything down the line from it is also isolated. And that gives you a little extra margin of safety. Of course, it's always best practice to have a neat and clean bench and to really watch whatever you're doing. I hope I cleared up things a little bit, and I know I have learned a little bit. Goodbye, and thanks for watching.